yesterday with the music video. I bet you love the artwork at the time. Now you just look back and go, oh. Yeah, it's it kind of cringes me when I watch like my old content because like obviously I'm I changed a lot. How about this? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I was ten then. It's incredible, but you've always been very talented. You've always been very connected to music. I've got to ask you because you're still. He oh, by the way, you hosted Junior Eurovision. How was that? You it did was such a good job. Thank you so much. It was really tough uh, because like um, basically I had to like skip school for such a long time and memorize so many lines. And plus, I really hated the outfit that they put me in and the hairstyle, which was really rough as well. Why didn't you just argue for what you wanted? I tried, trust me, but I couldn't really change it. So it was like a Georgian designer and stuff, but like, you know. You could have you collaborated with her and suggested what you know so you have bits of your personality in the outfit i tried i tried but it didn't work out unfortunately uh, is it okay if i bring one of your biggest fans in on this chat of course it is like a huge fan hang on a second it was a special request i'm just hoping that he's available um Oh my God, William! Hello, honeys! <laughs> you so much. I can't believe it's Lizzie Pop. You know what? We talk about you all the time. Literally, we're like, would Lizzie? What would Lizzie Pop do? What would Lizzie Pop say? She would say, "Oh, Deli, 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 oh, whoa!" <laughs> you look amazing. Thank you so much. You do too. I love your skin. It's so clear. Oh, thank you so much. Vietnamese jeans, honey. Oh, and yeah. a really bad diet, apparently, is the trick. You're in London now? Yeah, I moved here, like, um, this year. Oh, my God. Babes, I live in South London. When you're in town, just holler at your boo. We will, like, get coffee. It'll be amazing. Meet up, like, all of us. Oh, oh and Devin, don't you live in London as well? Yes, I do. I do. I'm, I, I'm shocked. Why you said you were in London, I had no idea. I thought you went to Glissy. No, I moved, and I'm in boarding school here now, which... Wow, know. Lizzie Pop in an English boarding school. Who would, who would have thought? Who would have... <laughs> <laughs> she still sounds like she's from Malibu, though, doesn't she, William? It's very American. When I hear her, it's like being at home. It's like, oh, hey, Georgia. Hey, California. Hey, Lizzie <laughs> Pop. Wait, but since when do you live in London? I didn't know. Babes, for like 12 years. No. Yeah, 14 years, forever. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. He's, in Rot he's in Rotterdam now, um, on ground, working very hard, covering the Eurovision Song Contest. And how's it going? You know, it's really intense. I just got back from the arena. It's like 9.30 here. And I left this morning. I know I got up at like 5. So, yeah, it's kind of like being up 24 hours a day. Um, but there's just so much to do and like so much stuff behind the scenes. You know how it is. Like people just see the output. They don't see like all the other stuff, the technical stuff, fixing descriptions on video. Just It's a lot, but we love it. It gives us life. And um, I miss having Deb in here though, to be honest. It's like half of my heart is in London still. I'm, oh, actually... I'm talking about Deb in. Sorry. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about going on the adult Eurovision when I turn 18, but I'm not sure yet. Oh, actually, this is really good topic of conversation. Destiny, took it. William, take it away. Well, there are three 18-year-olds here right now, including Destiny Chukunyere, who you'll know from Junior Eurovision, and yes. Stefania from Greece, who you also probably know. So the next queen to move from teen star to adult icon is Lizzie Japarizzi. <laughs> we hope so. Like, the vibe of Eurovision, it was, like, so fun. Like, seriously. And I feel like it's going to be a real step up from junior Eurovision. But I feel like I've been on yeah. so many types of Euro Eurovision stuff that it's like, <laughs> I have to do this as well, you know? So I have to tell you something. Oh, yeah, go on. So, Devin, you may remember that Lizzie Pop, as part of her gift bag at JESC, their delegation gave out these scented candles. Yes. And so I had it in my memorabilia collection, and it somehow, like, melted to the bookshelf. So there's a part of my house 
that will forever smell like you because this candle won't come off the shelf. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing, but I'm just going to say it's a good thing, honestly. It smells amazing. <laughs> it smell, and I don't have that candle anymore. Oh, no. Well, I'll scrape <laughs> you off some wax that's and send it to thing. you. <laughs> Thank you. That would be amazing. You got it. But it's interesting, Lizzie, because the music you now put out, though, it it would be like nothing we've heard at Eurovision because you know she's gone like indie rock. It's rock. very, yeah. I like I mean, the aesthetic as well. Yeah, because like the new music video we just put out, I mean, we're gonna put out on Saturday. It's like very gory, it has like some mm. horror elements, some vintage elements because that's what I like the most and that's how I express myself the most. We also have like non binary people um, on, on stage with us playing in the band, and I really wanted to introduce that kind of diversity in Georgia, which doesn't mm. exist. So I'm trying to, you know, make my music and my music videos as inclusive as possible. So that's pretty much the goal. You know, this is in keeping with your interview, which you had with William when you were 11 years old. I think the title is still on Wibby Blogs that Lizzie Pop wants to be a human rights activist or something yes. like that, wasn't it? Like Absolutely. You it wasn't an act it wasn't a pr stunt it was um it was real which yeah. brings me to my next question and actually this is a question for both of you i'm gonna kick it off with lizzie pop this year's eurovision slogan yeah. called open up what does that mean to you well that means full-on self-expression like what you actually represent without the pressure of society like sort of your internal beliefs like who you are as a person your sex it's not only about your sexuality it's like who you represent who you want to be without labels without anything just you that's like what it means to me to be honest and william i'm gonna give it a slight twist for your um the response i want from you is more about open up was decided two years ago but it's been recycled for 2021 as a journalist on ground in an environment that seemingly is closed, what does open up mean to you working through this open up slogan everywhere around you, yet um, nothing's open? You know what? Opening up is not about buildings. It's not about admissions to a bar or a club. It's about yourself and how open you are. My biggest regrets in life all revolve around me being closed, not saying yes, not showing up either when someone needed me or when I had a chance to do something. The only regrets I have are for things I didn't do because I wasn't open. And so I think sometimes you just need to be brave and push past whatever is holding you back, whether that's you're nervous about something, you're angry at someone, you don't want to see them. You need to open up and let them in. Oh. I think it's also about mental health, sort of, mm -hmm. like, opening up as in, like, um, you know, nowadays, I feel like mental health is something that became really important and talked about, and especially, like, I'm learning about psychology, like, a lot, and I feel like um, we have to open up about our issues and our problems to, re to resolve them. It doesn't have to be super public, but, you know, if you don't get past that, you will never be able to fully open up and recover from your life tr life trauma, etc. And just as you said, like you regret not making some choices, some decisions, but once you overcome your problems, you will. And I feel like it's also about that. Just like talking about what's wrong, talking about your issues and just becoming a, a better version of yourself. You know, I love that because it's open up to yourself because when you repress things, they don't go away. They linger under the surface and then they will get more toxic. The voices will get louder and they will come for you. So you have to engage with the problems, the dark voices you hear. Listen and talk back. Don't let them talk at you. Talk with them yeah. and then you can control them. Sure. Yes. But William, as a recycled slogan though, how, 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 how does it feel? Because this was decided a long time ago, like way before Corona, because I've been asking a lot of the, the, you know, the artists that have come on and a lot of them give responses tied in with what's actually going on now, but it, it predates that. Yeah, I mean, the slogan open up is timeless. I don't think it matters that Eurovision was canceled. If anything, the cancellation of last year's Eurovision makes it more relevant because we've all had more time to marinate in our issues <laughs> to kind of be confronted with whatever reality we're living. Um, so it, it makes no difference to me. 
Yeah. I've got to thank both of you and I've got to thank William Lee Adams especially because he was like Lizzie Pop I need you to put me in I need we need to double screen time on that Lizzie you have been such an important part of our lives of the Eurovision community and the yeah is that you are considering it now that you're 18 so <laughs> bring almost. it almost <laughs> bring it on so much so 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 much and thank you for having me thank you so love much. you both take care guys bye bye <laughs>